why don't I get a piece of land and dig a lake myself? I mean, how hard can it be? Yes, last time you watched us dig a very large hole in my field. Right, you better come back. We excavated thousands of tonnes of soil to create a lake. Damo managed to go through several dumpers. I experienced pegging for the first time. First part, my arse on your face, Steve. And Steve fingered my bum. Ah! Damo was always busy breaking his dumpers. It's the second one he's fucked. After the clay was smoothed, we were ready to fill the lake. Filling a lake is very different to filling up a paddling pool. Literally hundreds of thousands of litres of water are needed to fill it up and it really does take weeks. Now some people are lucky enough to have a water source like a stream or a river nearby to their site, however we're not so lucky. Therefore we needed to come up with another plan. Now many of you will say we should have used a borehole to fill this lake up. You're probably right, however I didn't have planning permission to do that at the time, so I had to use another method. I chose to use a combination of a pipe from Thames Water on a reduced rate and lorries to fill up the lake. So I have just returned. It is the first morning after I've returned from Germany where I got scared the shit out of. I've come to have a look at the lake and it's been quite exciting. It's my first view of it this morning. I went, oh my God. There's actually nearly all the water in it that we require. Because there's some really deep holes in here. In that corner over there, I was going to go get a marker rod out in a minute, but I think it's about six foot deep already um, in that corner. This corner is about four foot deep, got a four foot hole over there. So these bits sticking up, these are just like little plateaus that we left in. So there were some shallower plateaus to fish to, but the whole bottom is pretty much now covered. Um, with water and we're now working on creating a little shelf to go around the outside to put all the different plants on but it is looking amazing the lorries that we're having delivered of water are really helping the banks and the clay is going to crack because it's warm and we've had we've been really lucky you guys haven't but we've been really lucky that we've had a really crap summer really wet damp summer so far that means that we haven't had too much cracking in the clay which is why it's important now we've got the bottom covered that we just get the thing filled up as quick as possible really and get that clay nice and wet so it doesn't have a chance to crack and cracks mean leaks so that is where we're currently at the water is looking stunning and blue and i can't wait to see how fast it actually fills up now every day, the pipe from Thames Water was putting in around 25,000 litres. However, a lorry could deliver 30,000 litres of water at once and we could have up to three per day, meaning that we could get about 110,000 litres of water in using the combination of the two. So the lorries kept coming, we piped in the water and after about 20 minutes, each one was empty painstakingly filling the lake up by only around an inch every delivery. There we have it. We'd finally reached the fill line and the lake was crystal clear. Seeing my lake full of water, even though it looked still like a building site, was surreal. I had a hole, it was full of water. I could see where this was going. So I couldn't resist picking up the phones, my old friend Tom Maker, to come and take a look. Look who's come to have a look at the lake. Come to have a little look before I try it out. What do you think then, mate? Amazing. Even though it's green with algae. You can see I've annoyingly had a bit of an algae bloom though today yeah, in this far corner. Mate, it's been like it for two days. That's going to happen. Like you've got the freshest of water going in and at the minute there's nothing around it to combat the algae. Which... Mm. Well, the plants come, so we've got the plants arriving next week, yeah. which are around about 1,500 reeds, which 
we kind of measured it and thought, but yeah, it's that, do you get them nine inch? Do you get them taller? Which ones do you put where? Like there's so much to learn about. We've been doing it with Jack who plants yeah. up a lake down at the estate, but everyone's got a different opinion you know, of what to put in and where, but- The only my... opinion I'd, I'd, and if I would be the same, if I ever built a lake, the only opinion I'd ever listen to is someone that's built a lake. Yeah. Because everyone, like is every angler's dream to build a lake and they all say, this is what I would do. I would do it this way, but it isn't them that's investing one, two, three hundred thousand into doing it. And the only people you're going to learn off are, are people, people that have done, done it. it. Because they and would have made, made the mistakes. The mistakes. Like I, yeah. I learned that we didn't get a ball roll in quick enough, which is why we've had this What You see this is where the algae yeah. bloom is in the corner here, which maybe I can get, do you reckon I could get in there with a pair of waders and a landing net and get some of that you out? You could scoop it out. I mean, obviously. Or do you think it'll actually help maybe settle the water a bit and change the pH? It will just sink down a bit, I suppose. Again, I'm not really much of an expert when it comes to this sort of stuff. Me and my mum have got a debate on of when we're going to get the first duck landing on the, uh, on the lake. Well, I reckon because you've got the, the lines around it, it will, it will certainly be hard for a bigger bird to take off. So it's saying is I'm going to go and buy and invest in me ducks as well. Well, like, if it's, I'd, have, I'd have ducks. I think ducks are cool. The only if I clip their wings, the fox will get them, won't they? I don't know. The only problem you have with ducks, and this happened to a friend of mine who's got a lake that's similar to how this is going to be with a cabin and everything, is they become too friendly, and as lovely as they are, when ducks start pooing everywhere, and they're doing like 10, 12 a day, it can become a mess. Oh. And everyone wants to feed them, and they are pretty, but then they want to feed them, but then they're treading in all the poo and the poo's going inside the cabin. Oh shit, that's, yeah. That's the only thing you have, like, it's the same with chickens. Chickens are cool, but they just mess everywhere. Yeah. I'll tell you what, um, how about I go and grab a fishing rod, you can have a bit of a cast. Two yeah. sets, we'll be back. Have a little chuck out. It's so hard to imagine, like I've seen loads of lakes get built before, and they just look like, well they obviously start as holes in the ground, but you come back six months later and they're like completely changed. And obviously because there's water in the lake, everything that's around it like benefits off the water. So the grass grows quicker, all the reeds grow quicker around the outside, everything just, they mature so quickly. And if he's got 1500 reeds coming, you could put them in, plant them in, within six, eight months, they're gonna have spread and they're gonna be up to sort of like three, four foot. And, Here we uh, go. They, they just mature so quick, any lake. This is the worst stage because it's hard to see where, where everything happens. But as soon as it's filled up with water, It'll look bigger when it's filled out of water as well. Yeah, because it's, it's, got, go, it's got to keep coming up the banks, it? will go it? across, yeah. So you're going to have like another, what, there's a metre over there. You know, you're going to get an extra couple of metres even render it goes over the shelf. And then obviously all you do then is just get in your chest waders, walk around the shelf and just start planting all your reeds in and they come up and they'll obviously be like for the structure. The one good thing is because it's of the size, like you might, you won't get the natural erosion what the bigger lakes get. Yeah, with the and wind. because you're not going to put a load of fish in it, what happens is, is if the lake doesn't have, not that if the lake doesn't have enough natural food, but what carp naturally do is they burrow into the bank. So, so, so Bart said he's had it on yeah, his lake and then it was it, mad. The, the, the bank curves out like that. And well, when we, when we took the water out, there was like, if you imagine it's like this, there's a big island in the middle, there's a little one on the other side. When we took the water out, the, the second day the water was out, you could see the, the, the grounds around it. The island was like a mushroom. It had a stalk and then the island was almost floating. And then where we took the water out, the weight of the island just snapped and we ended up shoring it up and building it up where the fish had burrowed it under. You could stand on the bank when the water was full and like obviously with no chest waders on, just with like, just with like your swimming shorts or whatever, you could pull your whole body underneath. So when people say, oh, I'm fishing tight up to the far side, they're still six foot past. So right. Can hit it first cast. Ollie can be. Oh, so he can be the judge. I'm on about how tight can we get to that far margin over by the pole. What the closest to the, the far closest, side? The closest one chuck each, closest to the far side. So here is the benchmarks. I know you're the other handed to me, aren't you? Matt, no odds to me. I don't think I've hit that hard enough. No. It's not. Oh bad. no. <laughs> <laughs> now that's, la bad. that's landed in the deep bit just behind the plateau. But I, yeah. I don't think I hit that hard. <laughs> it's hard to judge. I'll tell you what makes it hard is the fact there's nothing around it. That was my one, but that's a good 70 yard chuck, see? Yeah. Over there. That'll so be probably, the before banker. it's even stocked, that will probably be the best spot on the lake. <laughs> you because, can tell. Because anywhere that's the furthest away from any anglers is always the best place. Well, basically what it is, so what have I got to get to that? There's, di there's deep water behind the platform. But yeah, for closest one's into the corner. So, come on, professional angler. <laughs> He's 
just won that by about a foot. <laughs> But yeah. do you, do you that's feel a nice the, cast. Do you feel the drop in that corner over there? Yeah, but what's also good is a lot of people nowadays don't always have 12 foot rods. So I've just proved there that you can reach anywhere on here with a nine foot rod. Yeah. So if you haven't got a 12 foot rod, you can and come I, and fish I think here. I think nine foot rods are kind of the, are gonna be brilliant for here. Cause I don't think you wouldn't want a 12 or 13 footer on here. With the cabin, like a lot of the people that will be coming will be with a family. So it's like, you're gonna book to come here for the fishing but you might have a car where you can't put a six foot rod holder through, but you can put a rod holder that will accommodate nine foot rods in. So, and you can still pack the family in and bring your fishing gear. The lake's perfect. Yeah. Well, I think the guys will probably be prioritizing the kit to be fair. Let's have a Well, wander. I would prioritize the kit if it was me, let's, yeah. Let's have a wander around. <laughs> a couple of guys in machines and a bit of material brought in and everything just changes instantly. This is it's so weird, all the algae collected over the air, the air yesterday. I suppose it's bothering me more, but you're gonna grab some blue dye, aren't you, from, is it The RH? algae's like something you've just got to think of, like, if there's a stagnant puddle, there's algae always grows in, on the top of it, but as soon as it rains or it splashes out, it, it goes, you know, and there's, at the minute the water's coming in, there's, it's brand new, isn't it? Like, it's like filling up a bathtub, it's brand new. Yeah. So until you've got everything that's natural in place, like I say, I'm not like an expert, like, but only what I see over the years where I fish. You it, described it earlier, as you've got Polaroid glasses on, and that means the light can't get to your eyes as easy yeah. as you've got that film. So I'm gonna put the blue dye in, which many people see in different lakes around the country. Yeah. And that basically stops that algae it's problem It's like having there. that on the top of the water. That's so, what, so it means the light can't hit the it, bottom, It just yeah? doesn't penetrate. You'll notice with lakes that are mega weedy, where I believe now we're out of the EU, or it's something to do with the EU law, the powder that people used to put in lakes is now illegal in the UK which is why it was replaced with the dye. So okay. they dye the lakes blue to put like a polari polarizing filter over the lake, so to speak. And it just stops the sunlight from penetrating through the water. Yep. And it cuts down on algae. I mean, Rob Ailes, he owns probably the best day ticket complex alongside Linear, you've got Farlows, and Rob looks after his fish like babies. Yeah. And all of his lakes have the blue dye in. In, in terms of how much those lakes are looked after, I think RH would be. Oh, yeah, I would say like, one. yeah, Rob is like your benchmark of how people should look after a fishery. You know, if you've got people coming down and the lake's covered in weed, you know, they've traveled a long way, they're here on holiday, they want nice, convenient fishing, and as well, it looks nice. And yeah, it does. The it just gives you a peace of mind. That's what Bart said earlier. He loves how blue it is yeah, on Acorn. But it gives you a peace of mind that you've done everything you can to stop it. Like you, some things natural, you can't stop. But and you got to put it in on a windy day, right, where it can blow. Oh, it's amazing stuff. Like it's hard to explain. You imagine having like a bottle of black currant, like two liters. If you poured it in this corner, now it wouldn't change the color at all. But you could pour two liters in here, and in the morning it would look like the ocean. Like it's so concentrated. It like it's um, I, I couldn't believe it when I first saw it. It's the most concentrated dye I have ever seen anywhere. Better than Robinson's. Yeah, but it would make this like it would look amazing. So I bought an aerator last night. Yeah. Same ones as they use in their stock ponds. Because I know you can have the ones I've seen at RH on the bottom of the lake with the bubbles, but I've yeah. always traditionally seen and I quite like the noise of yeah, yeah, um, yeah. the kind of fluffy up the water ones. So we've got one of those coming into this corner yeah. next week down by the balancing pipe, which are probably wondering what the hell is a balancing pipe. So let me explain. So this right here doesn't look like much, but this is actually my balancing pipe. So this is how I can control the water level within the lake. It goes under the road and is connected to a French drain system to get the water away from here and down the road towards where it needs to go. Basically how it works is the water level will naturally sit around about here. And if you start to get a period of prolonged rain, we have loads of rainfall in a short period of time, the lake will rise and obviously overflow just like your sink or bath at home straight into that pipe. However, sometimes there's periods where a lake owner, especially moving towards the winter or if there's been a slight worry about an oxygen crash, want to get rid of water a lot quicker. And this is how I do that. Basically this pipe 
unscrews and has a black seal the whole way round it. And that means that if the water is here, if I remove this pipe, I could drop the lake by a foot instantly. Pump some more water into it and start to do a water change because the oxygen crash is becoming more common now. We're getting hotter, hotter summers and the temperatures are changing. There was one in a local town from me just last week and all the fish in the lake died. So we've got to be able to think about these things and got to be able to think about how to drain the lake. Now you just heard me talking with Tom about dye and a short while later he dropped off a container from the guys at RH Fisheries. It's amazing how little of this stuff you actually need. I literally used seven one litre cupfuls of this highly concentrated blue dye to dye the whole lake blue. Slipping into my waders on a slightly windier day with Steve to help I did my best to distribute the dye whilst trying not to fall in the deep gullies and the water go over my waders. Sadly, this did not happen to Steve's amusement. However, eventually I did get the job done. Literally a few hours later, the lake was completely blue, stopping all light from penetrating through the clear water and stopping the algae problem altogether. Good morning. Although it's not really a good morning because after everything's been going so smoothly, we have a leak. And we definitely know it's a leak and a fast one because water is flowing out the pipe down to the left of the lake at quite a rate and it's blue. So that makes us think that it's got to be coming through a pipe to be going at that rate. So that makes us then think that what's happening is the water is escaping through a land drain. It's dropping by about that much the lake over 24 hours, um, which means that is about 10 to 15,000 litres of water escaping and going down that ditch. And it's filling up the ditch and then backing up, um, which is a good thing because we know the ditch works. Um, bad thing, I've had to get Martin back and we're just about to try and find the leak. We fucking found it then. Yeah, I found it, man. Bastard. Is that it there? Yeah. It's, it's gushed in there. I mean, it's not. It's slowed down, but it's still leaking, isn't it? That's it. It's the one we thought, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm going to dig that right out. I'm going to mark that there. Yep. And then when know the spacings for the next one, then we can potentially dig down and find the next one. So in the process of fixing a leak, I've actually um, created a problem and I flooded the ditch that they are coming to fit the power cable to the lodge on in a couple of weeks. So what I've had to do, and I don't actually know if the leak is fixed until I kind of empty this ditch out and it stays dry. So what I've had to do is hire a pump, which I've never used before from my local hire station in Farringdon and I'm trying to set it up. So I've just spent about 20 minutes untangling it. You can see down here how much water it is all blue has flooded down this ditch. Uh, and that is what I'm trying to fix and solve. So let's see how we get on. It's obviously quite easy to tell when the lake leaks and fills something up because what happens is the ditches go blue because I dyed the lake blue. I didn't actually think that that would be quite handy in telling me if the lake was leaking, but it's been brilliant so far. And normally what keeps happening, I'm hoping this has gone down. Oh, this is good. The ditch is no longer blue and there's not a lot of water in there. Um, that's a very good sign because we think we fixed the last leak uh, that you may have seen Martin on the digger excavating in front of the lodge and we found uh, another land drain which the water was pouring out of 
into this French drain system we did. Remember at the start of the build when we were putting in the French drains, seeping into the stones, running along, ditches blue, could tell the lake was leaking. But as I say, we tried to put in an electricity trench for the cable that I need to connect up to because I've got a cable uh, here which the electricity company is coming out to fit. They're connecting basically to the mains that goes to my house. Uh, so we've had to dig in and around the cable in a trench up to the back of the lodge, uh, which I've now flooded, ruining all the sound and all the rest of it. So that is what I'm trying to fix. Right, I've done it, I've done a thing. You can see this is now really flowing down to the hole, which is pumping it out. So I think there's a surface water level and this, sorry for the shaky filming, is where it was leaking from under the pipe. So hopefully that stops leaking and this ditch goes dry by the end of the day and we know that the leak we have on the lake is then sorted. Not all heroes wear capes and somebody, because the guys are not around to help us do this at the minute, has been filling in. I've been wondering where she's been all day, filling in the electric trench up to the back of the lodge with all this material and you've stamped it down and got it right, haven't you, Tez? Yeah, I've got to stamp it again before the topsoil goes on. I get a bit higher level because it'll drop anyway. Two, four days. We've yeah. had to do a bit of repair work to the ditch, haven't we? So that the water yeah. goes down to the end. Yeah, we've got to put some stones. I'm making a wall at that end over the weekend. You've done a brilliant job. Thank you very much. You can see, guys, the existing pipe here that comes through a little pump in there so any water that ended up with all the rain that we've had in that trench has been pumped straight back into the lake and you can also see from here the level difference between where the lodge is and where I'm stood and just how much that field's had to be built up to make everything level. Um, I think you're pretty much done now. I do need to put up a camera but how am I gonna be in the basket at the front of the CCTV camera? put a CCTV camera up there because uh, we've had a few things happen recently that's been interesting and we put this pole in really graciously with Jack a little while ago uh, and no problem doing that at all but I don't actually know how I'm going to be in the basket on the front of my makeshift cherry picker and not be able to control me getting up there because the controls are in the small boy my neighbour's kid perfect aha love having a child labourer next door. Come on. Small boy? Hello. Hello, are you available? Yeah. Right, do you have a drill? Because my ex-fiance nicked mine. Could you potentially bring a drill and a couple of screws down to mine and I'm going to get you to get in a JC... Have you ever been in a JCB before? Yeah, kind you... of, yeah. Kind of, that'll do. That attaches to the fork, took it out. So you take that over to steel, hang. Okay? Um, I'm going to get you to send me up in the basket of a JCB so that I can put a CCTV camera on a pole. Sound all right? Well, um, do you need big, big screws, um? I don't know. I, I, any screws. Yeah, but if you're just, it's going to be on camera, you're like big ones. Just, I don't know. Could you just bring some screws? Yeah. That's it. Keep going. Hey, yeah. Great. If you break your thumb, I've not got the money to deal with that. <laughs> I spent it all on planning permission. All right, phenomenal. I'll see you in a minute. That's in a minute. Wait. Right, I'll go get the key. Right, welcome to a JCB load on. I don't want you to manoeuvre it. I'll manoeuvre it where it needs to go. So that is both of them together. There's been loads of break-ins everywhere recently. And I have a good CCTV system, but I have nothing quite like this, and I've been meaning to do this job for a long time. Be prepared, be Rio Link. Oh, I'm prepared. Tilt it a bit more, just what you did again then. No, no, no. Oh, 
Oh, fuck me! <laughs> right, yeah, okay. Let me just get used to that a minute at this height. That fucker don't shut up in a minute, I'm gonna lose my sh It's a Terran, look at that. Marvellous, I've got a camera. Unique identifier code of the camera. How would I know that? Find your UID number on the body of your camera. The UID number is printed below the QR code, which is what I thought. That's cool, right. Focus! made it. It don't look great, does it? <laughs> it don't look great. Oh, dear. Well, I get bold speed to sort it out. But that's the best that I can do. Next time on Fowler's Fishery. So we are now into October. Oh, I'm hoping it doesn't shit it down. Jack, I'm manual labouring. You will be amazed at the laurels. That's and that's what's specified in the landscaping. Yeah, they're, be quite they're good lovely ones. To keep I the planners happy. Yeah.